Good afternoon, everyone. So in today's lecture, we are going to study gymnosperm, angiosperm, and the life cycle pattern. So before we proceed with the lecture, let's take the pre-reading question. And the question says, match list 1 with list 2. List 1 contains citrus, adiatum, sphagnum, marchensia. List 2 contains pteridophyte, gymnosperm, liverwort and mosses. Choose the correct answer from the option given below. Citrus, Pinus, Tychos, they all belong to gymnosperm. They all are gymnosperms. Adiatum, Salvinia. Lagilena, Equisitum, Tylotum, Paris. Diopteris. They all belongs to pteridophyte. Sphagnum is a moss. The moss are bryophytes. Marchensia is a liver word a liver word also belong to bryophyte please remember these examples these are very important so citrus a is a gymnosperm b is adiatum and adiatum is a pteridophyte c is sphagnum and sphagnum is moss D. Markensia and Markensia is a liver word. So the correct option is two. Next question says, which one is wrongly matched? Option one is uniflagellate gametes, polysiphonia. Option two is biflagellate zoospore, brown algae. Option three is gamma cups, marchensia. Fourth is unicellular organism, corella. They are asking about the wrongly matched. We know that the red algae or rhodophyce the asexual spores are also non-motile. And the sexual gametes, they are also non-motile. That means in red algae, the flagella are absent. Right? And option one is saying uniflagellate gametes in polysiphonia. 
पॉलीसाइफोनिया इज अ रेड एलगी एंड इन रेड एलगी द फ्लैजिला आर एबसेंट दैट मीन्स द ऑप्शन वन इज द रॉन्गली मैच्ड Now let's discuss the other option as well. Option two says by flagellate zoo spore brown algae. Yes, the brown algae. The zoo spores they are by flagellated. The two in number. The unequal in size. And lateral in position. in these spores zoo spores in brown algae they are pear shaped that means this is correct gamma cups markensia yes gamma cups they are the asexual birds which are found in markensia and markensia is a liverwort unicellular organism corella corella is a green algae it is unicellular and coral is also rich in protein remember this that it is rich in protein and is used as a food supplement by the space travelers so second third and fourth they are correct and the incorrect pair is one so the correct option with respect to the question is one now let's start with the gymnosperm gymno means naked and sperm means seed so in gymnosperm you will observe naked seed because the seed or the ovule is not enclosed by the ovary wall we know that the ovule after fertilization or after maturation it forms the seed and the ovary after maturation they form the fruit but in case of gymnosperm the ovule are not enclosed by the ovary wall so here the seeds are naked and gymnosperm they include medium sized trees tall trees and shrubs please remember that gymnosperm they include medium sized tree tall trees and shrub they never include herbs okay very important remember this and you can see in the image these are the tall sequoia plants these are the sequoia tree and these tree they are very giant they are very tall the roots in gymnosperm they are tap root tap root they are also known as primary roots the primary roots are those roots which are arises from the radical and the adventitious roots are those roots which are arises from the part other than the radical like if they are arises from the stem then they are known as the adventitious root in gymnosperm we are going to study two genus mainly pinus and cycas so the roots of the pinus they show association with fungi and this association is known as mycorrhiza please don't get confused with the mycorrhiza and lichen because lichen is an asymbiotic association between the algae and fungi but mycorrhiza 
is the symbiotic association between the fungi and the roots of higher plants. So the roots of pinus, they show mycorrhizal association where the fungi, it obtain the food from the plant and the fungi also provide or help in the mineral absorption. The roots of the cycus, which are the colloid roots, these roots, they show the symbiotic association with the cyanobacteria. And the example of cyanobacteria are Nostoc and Anabena. You can see in this image, these are the colloid roots. And this is the cross section of the colloid root. And you can see this green, green part. This is the portion which is occupied by the cyanobacteria. And these cyanobacteria, they help in the nitrogen fixation. Please remember that colloid root, they show association with cyanobacteria in case of cycles. It's important, okay? Remember this. The stems are unbranched in case of cycles and the stems are branched in case of pinus and cedrus. Remember this. This is also important that the stem are unbranched in case of cycles and the stem are branched in case of pinus and cedrus. Leaves which are found in gymnosperm, they are also well adapted to uh, withstand or to overcome the extreme temperature, humidity and wind. So the leaves in case of gymnosperm, they are needle-like to in order to reduce the surface area so that less amount of water is loss. They also have a thick cuticle because cuticle is a waxy layer. So it also prevents the water loss. Third is the sunken stomata. The stomata which are present in the deep pit or the stomata which are present on the lower surface. So that the direct light cannot fall on the stomata. It also helps in reduce the water loss. So these are the adaptations which are shown by the leaves of the gymnosperm. Please remember that these adaptations are very important that the leaves of the gymnosperm, they are well adapted. They are needle-like. They have thick cuticle. They have sunken stomata in order to reduce the water loss or in order to reduce the transpiration. In pteridophyte, you have uh, observed that uh, the mostly the pteridophyte, they are homosporous. That means they produce same type of spores. But there are some exception in pteridophyte like Salvinia and Silaginella, they are heterosporous. But in gymnosperms, they are completely heterosporous. Please remember this point that gymnosperm, they are completely heterosporous. And they produce two types of spores. They are microspores and megaspores. And in gymnosperm, there are two types of leaves are present. They are microsporophylls and megasporophyll. The microsporophylls, they cluster together and they form the male cone. Similarly, the female, uh, the female cone is formed by the megasporophylls. When the megasporophyll, they cluster together, they form the female cone. And these male cones, they consist of mega, uh, they consist of, sorry, this male cone, they consist of microsporophyll and the microsporophyll, they can have the microsporangia. These microsporangia, they have the microspore mother cells. Meo when meiosis occur in microspore mother cells, haploid spores are produced, which are known as microspores. And these microspores, on maturation, they form the pollen grain, which is the male gametophyte. Okay. Similarly, the female cone, which has the mega sporophyll, the mega sporophyll, they have the mega sporangium, which is equivalent to ovule. These mega sporangium contains a mega spore mother cell. And these, when the meiosis occur in the megaspore mother cell, haploid megaspores are formed. Four megaspores are formed, out of which three get degenerated and only one is functional. That functional megaspore will form the multicellular female gametophyte 
which bears the two or more archegonia. And one more important point that the pinus is monoecious plant. It is bisexual. The male and female cone are present on the same plant. Cycus is a dioecious plant or a unisexual. The male cone are present on the separate plant body and the megasporophyll, they are also present on the separate plant body on the different trees. Okay. So, cycus is unisexual or it's dioecious. Pinus is bisexual and monoecious. You can see in this image, this is a male cone of stikers. Here you can see these are megasporophylls. This is a female plant. This is a male plant. They are separate plant or separate plant body. So the stikers, they are dioecious or unisexual. This is a Picture showing the pinus. This is a male cone and the female cone. They are present on the same plant. So they are pinus, they are bisexual. And the male cone, they are present lower on the lower branches. And the female cone, they are present on the upper branches. This is how the pinus tree look like. In this image, you can see the leaves, they are needle like. Like this. They are needle like and why they are needle like so that in order to reduce the water loss so that less surface area is present so that the water loss is less. And in this picture you can see this this is showing the sulfur shark. This is a male cone and when the pollen grains are released from the male cone then it forms a sulfur shark because the pollen grains are yellow in color. Okay, so on the basis of appearance of the color, we call it as sulfur shar. And sulfur shar you will observe only in case of the pinus. Remember this, only in case of pinus you will observe the sulfur shar. Good afternoon, next students. Now let's discuss the life cycle of gymnosperm. The main plant body sporophyte, okay, it is deployed in nature. The sporophyte, it bear the microsporophyll and the megasporophyll, right? The microsporophyll, they cluster together and they will form the male cone. Similarly, the megasporophyll, they will cluster together and they will form the female cone, okay? These microsporophyll, they contain microsporangia. The microsporangia bear the microspore mother cell. When meiosis occur in these microspore mother cell, haploid microspores are formed. These are haploid. These microspores on maturation, they form the pollen grain, which is the male gametophyte. And similarly here also, the female cone, they consist of megasporangia, which is equivalent to ovule. Remember, in case of Gymnosperm, the ovule is orthotropous. Orthotropous means straight, like this. It is straight. It is unitegmic in nature. Unitegmic means there is only one integument. Here you can see in the image, I have already drawn, drawn only one integument. It is unitegmic in nature. Remember this. And inside the ovule, nucellus is present. The one cell of the nucellus, it gets differentiated into megaspore mother cell, which is also deployed. This megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis and produce megaspore. Four megaspore are produced because we know that the end product of the meiosis are the four haploid spores. Okay, so four megaspores are formed out of which three get degenerated and only one is functional. This functional megaspore will form the female gametophyte and this female gametophyte will bear the archegonium. Okay? 
and the microspore on maturation they will form the pollen grains which is the male gametophyte so pollen grain will produce the male gamete right and these archegonium they produce the egg so the male gamete and when the egg fuses they will produce the zygote and this zygote is also deployed remember this zygote will undergo mitosis division and they will form embryo and we know that after fertilization the ovule get mature and this mature ovule is known as seed here in gymnosperm you will observe naked seed because the ovules they are not enclosed by the ovary wall that is why we said that in case of gymnosperm the seeds are naked i hope it is clear i have discussed the entire life cycle of gymnosperm and one more important point in gymnosperm the pollination is occur only through wind remember this wind pollination is most common in gymnosperm in angiosperm you will observe the pollination is taking place through wind also water also and biotic agents are also involved like insects butterflies bees okay but in gymnosperm you will observe the wind pollination occur next we are going to discuss angiosperm here i am going to give you a very brief about the angiosperm because we are going to discuss angiosperm in details when we are going to uh, study sexual reproduction in flowering plants okay angiosperm they are known as flowering plants remember this this is a structure of a flower the flower they consist of sepal petals androecium gynoecium the whorls of stamen is known as androecium and the unit of androecium is stamen similarly the whorl of carpel or pistil is known as gynoecium so the unit of gynoecium is carpel similarly the unit of calyx is sepal and unit of corolla is petal so the pistil or the carpel they consist of three part number one is the stigma second one is style third third one is ovary stigma it is present at the top and it is the portion which receive the pollen grain okay so let's say this is a pollen grain so the landing of the pollen grain takes place on the surface of stigma this long tube like structure it is a style and this portion this is a ovary which consists of ovules and the stamen they consist of two part one is anther which bear the pollen grains and the second one is filament so structure is like this this is a filament and this is a anther inside the anther the pollen grains are present okay now let's discuss the cycle in angiosperm this is a plant body which is sporophyte in gymnosperm as well as in angiosperm the main plant body is sporophyte these are the anther in the anther microsporangium are present 
these microsporangium they have the microspore mother cell meiosis occur in microspore mother cell and haploid microspores are produced these microspores on maturation they produce the pollen grain which is known as the male gametophyte why we call it as male gametophyte because gameto means gamete pollen grain is the plant structure which carries the male gamete so we call it as male gametophyte okay and this is a carpal part which consists of stigma style and ovary inside the ovary ovule is present in case of angiosperm the ovule is bitegmic you can see there's one this is one integument this is another integument in case of gymnosperm the, the ovule is having only one integument but in case of angiosperm the ovule is bitegmic it has an outer integument and the inner integument and these integument they provide protection to the ovule inside the ovule nucellus is present this is nucellus one cell of the nucellus let's say this one cell of the nucellus it get differentiated into megaspore mother cell this megaspore mother cell it undergo meiosis and it will produce four haploid megaspore out of which three get degenerated and only one is functional okay and that functional megaspore will produce the female gametophyte let's say this is the female gametophyte the female gametophyte in case of angiosperm is known as embryo sac this female gametophyte it is seven celled and eight nucleated this is the chalazal end chalazal end is the basal end this is the micropylar end at the micropylar end there's a egg apparatus is present and the egg apparatus is consist of two synergid and one egg cell so this red which i'm filling it with the red color let's say this is the egg cell these are the synergid so at the in the egg apparatus two synergid are present and one egg cell is present in the center there is central cell is present and this central cell they consist of two polar nuclei at the chalazal and three antipodal cells are present now you can count the 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven. Total seven cells are present in the embryo sac, and nuclei are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nuclei are present. That is why we call say that uh, the embryo sac of uh, angiosperm it is a seven cell then eight nucleated. Okay. now let me draw it here
so when the pollen grain they fall on the stigma on the surface of stigma they will produce a pollen tube and this pollen tube will enter into the embryo sac i'm drawing the enlarged part here okay Let's say this is a pollen tube. The pollen tube will enter through the micropylar end, and this pollen tube it consists or it contains the male gamete. The pollen tube it will enter one of the synergia. We know that in in the micropylar end there two synergia are present, right? So the pollen tube will enter one of the synergia, and in the synergia the filiform apparatus are present like this. These filiform of the filiform apparatus they will guide the entry of the pollen tube. So when the pollen tube enter, one gamete male gamete fuses with the egg. and the other male gamete it fuses with the central cell so when the one male gamete fuses with the egg they produce zygote and when the male gamete another male gamete fuses with the central cell they produces primary endosperm nucleus or later on maturation they will produce the endosperm you can see in the central cell now we already know that the central cell it consists of two polar nuclei right now after fusion with the male gamete now they have three nucleus right so the ploidy of the endosperm in angiosperm is triploid and zygote is diploid remember this and this endosperm is forming by the triple fusion and this type of fertilization is known as double fertilization because one fertilization is taking place here one here so we call it as double fertilization okay so please remember this is a very important point that in angiosperm double fertilization takes place in gymnosperm double fertilization does not takes place double fertilization is a characteristic feature of the angiosperm only please remember this and this zygote after formation of the zygote the zygote undergo mitotic division and will produce the embryo okay and the mature ovule will now form the seed and the seed in case of angiosperm it has two part that it has the seed coat and the embryo and the embryo consists of embryonal axis and the cotyledons okay this embryonal axis has the pimule part and the radical part pimule will form the 
future shoot and the radical will form the root this is how the new individual is formed in case of angiosperm this is the whole life cycle of angiosperm i have given you a very brief in detail the detail of the angiosperm we are going to study when uh, we'll discuss or we'll study the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plant then these things will become more clear to you and you can see in the life cycle as well the major portion is occupied by the sporophytic phase or the diploid phase that is why we say that in case of gymnosperm and the angiosperm the life cycle is diplontic okay so angiosperm and gymnosperm they have diplontic life cycle this i have already discussed now let's discuss the life cycle pattern this figure shows you the haplontic life cycle and most of the algae they have the haplontic life cycle you can see this the major portion is occupied by the haploid phase and the single cell zygote represent the sporophyte in case of the algae so algae they most of the algae they have the haplontic life cycle okay example are volvox pyrogyra chlamydomonas but remember i'm saying most of the algae they have haplontic life cycle i'm not saying that all the algae they have haplontic life cycle because there are exceptions are present and exception are fucus in fucus you will observe the diplontic life cycle ectocarpus polysiphonia kelps they are also algae and they have haplodiplontic life cycle okay that is why i'm saying that most of the algae they have haplontic life cycle second picture showing you the diplontic life cycle you can see the major portion is occupied by the diploid phase and there's a small portion occupied by the haploid phase so we call this cycle as diplontic life cycle because major portion is occupied by the diploid phase or the sporophytic the sporophytic phase is portion is more as compared to the gametophytic phase in diplontic life cycle you will observe in case of gymnosperm and angiosperm remember this and the fucus which is a brown algae also show diplontic life cycle here you will observe that the sporophyte it is dominant photosynthetic and independent whereas the gametophyte it is represented by a single cell and it is haploid and it is very reduced now this, let's come to the third figure which shows the haplodiplontic life cycle you can see the portion of the haploid and the diploid phase is almost same or it's almost equal that is why we call this cycle as haplodiplontic life cycle and you will observe the cycle in case of bryophyte pteridophyte ectocarpus polysiphonia kelps they all show haplodiplontic life cycle but there are very important point which i'm going to discuss please remember these points that in bryophyte the gametophyte is dominant it is independent it is photosynthetic it is green in color but the sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte for its nourishment and development okay because in because the sex organ they are present in case of bryophyte the sex organ they are present on the gametophyte okay and uh, when the fusion occur the zygote is formed this zygote produce a multicellular sporophyte and the sporophyte is differentiated into fourth seta and capsule the sporophyte it is attached to the gametophyte in case of bryophyte so the sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte for its nourishment and development in case of bryophyte please remember this point that gametophyte the in bryophyte the main plant body is the gametophyte and gametophyte is dominant and independent but the sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte in case of pteridophyte the main plant body is sporophyte okay in bryophyte the main plant body is gametophyte but in pteridophyte the main plant body is sporophyte it is dominant it is independent photosynthetic vascular plant body but the gametophyte in case of pteridophyte it is independent but short lived 
remember the gametophyte in case of pteridophyte it is known as prothallus okay and the prothallus it is independent it is multicellular but it is short lived or it is very small in size so remember in bryophyte the gametophyte is independent and the sporophyte is dependent in pteridophyte sporophyte and gametophyte they are both independent but sporophyte is dominant or the main plant body remember these difference okay these are very important is it clear to everyone give me thumbs up if it is clear to everyone then we'll proceed with the question okay so the question says which of the following statement is correct they asking about the correct statement student option 1 is ovules are not enclosed by the ovary wall in gymnosperm option 2 is selaginella is heterosporous while salvinia is homosporous option 3 is host tails are gymnosperm option 4 is stems are usually unbranched in both cycles and cedrus what do you think what will be the correct option so poll has been launched quickly answer through poll or you can even answer through chat box as well I want all of you to participate. Okay. Now let's discuss. option they are asking about the correct statement okay option 1 says the ovules are not enclosed by ovary wall in gymnosperm it is true because in gymnosperm you, you observe naked seed right and why you are observing naked seed because the ovules they are not enclosed by the ovary wall so this is correct second says selaginella is heterosporous while selvinia is homosporous remember this it is it is very important that selaginella and salvinia they both are heterosporous they produces two type of spores microspore which is small spore and macrospore which are large spores so this is incorrect hostels are gymnosperm hostels are teri pteridophyte they are not gymnosperm so third is incorrect four says stems are usually unbranched in both cycles and cedrus in cycles the stem is unbranched that is correct but in case of cedrus and pinus the stem is branched i told you that this point is very important remember this point okay 
and also remember that in cycles the colloid roots they show symbiotic association with cyanobacteria and the pinus shows symbiotic association with fungi which is known and the association is known as mycorrhiza also remember that cycas is dioecious or unisexual this is also important pinus is monoecious or bisexual these are the important points okay so the correct option is one that the ovules are not enclosed by ovary wall in gymnosperm okay i hope it is clear to everyone if you have any doubt please let me know in the chat box if it is clear please give thumbs up and if you have any doubt please let me know in the chat box okay thank you all for your participation i hope this lecture was informative for you thank you all see you in the next class and have a nice day